Hello there and welcome to another R2 electrical video. In this one I'll be explaining ceiling roses which you often see attached to lights like this one. I think you'll find it particularly useful if you're replacing your existing light fitting with something like this which doesn't need that ceiling rose at all but you do need to understand what the old ceiling rose did. Note in this example I'll be working on a dead demonstration system for the purpose of demonstrating how it is wired up. There's no power supply to it. If you are examining your own ceiling rose and light, it is of the utmost importance that you turn off the power to the lighting circuit that you're working on. First by identifying which circuit you're working on, where it is connected to the main fuse box, turning it off, then checking to make sure that the power has been turned off correctly before you begin work. If you're unsure how to do this, consult a competent electrician. So here's a ceiling rose that you would buy from a shop. Sometimes they come with a pendant part already fitted. We'll open one up by unscrewing the cap and take a peek inside. Here you will see three connect blocks and an earth connector. On the left you have the line connector, which is often called the switched live connector. This is the connector that takes the wire coming out of the switch and connects it to the live part of the light fitting. When the light switch is turned on, this will be live, hence its common name, switched live. In the centre you have the loop connector. This is where all the permanently live parts of the circuit are connected. This includes the wires from the live part of the main lighting circuit and the live wire that goes to the common part of the light switch or dimmer. On the right you have the neutral connector. This is where the neutral parts of the main lighting circuit and the light fitting are connected together. On the bottom you have the earth connector where all the earth wires from everywhere are connected together. Note the loop is usually in the middle but the line and neutral blocks may be on either side. Also note the cord grips. These support the wires coming from the light fitting so it doesn't rely on the small screws in the connector blocks to stop the light falling down. So now let's look at what you would see if you opened up one of your ceiling roses at home. At first glance it does appear to be quite complicated but it is actually quite simple. We'll go through the ceiling rose step by step explaining the wires as we go, keeping the completed one in the top right hand side for your reference. So here's the ceiling rose without any wires in it which you are already familiar with. Let's add the cables from the main lighting circuit. Essentially all you're doing here is tapping into the main lighting circuit so you can add the new switch and light for a new fitting. The live wires are connected together on the loop connector, the neutral wires on the neutral connector and the earth wires on the earth connector. Note the earth cables in standard wires have no insulating sheaf on them so you have to add this yourself. So how would you identify the wires that belong to the main lighting circuit? One of the ways is to trace back the live wires to the main grey insulation. Find the corresponding blues and check that they are connected to the neutral block. I've zoomed in a little to show this more clearly. You see two cables, each with their appropriate wires connected to the loop, neutral and earth connectors. So zooming back out, it's time to add the switch wires. You connect the brown wire of the switch to the loop connector. The other end of this at the switch will be connected to the common connector in the switch. The blue wire at the switch is connected to its L1 or L2 connectors and these will be connected to the line connector of the ceiling rose. It may seem a little confusing to understand why a blue wire is essentially used as a switch live, which is why electricians add a brown sleeve shown here to differentiate it from a normal neutral wire. This happens simply because the same type of wire is used to connect a switch as used in the main lighting circuit. The last part of wiring up a ceiling rose is to add the actual light fitting. To do this, simply connect the brown wire of the light fitting to the space in the line connector block and the other to the neutral. Then wrap the wires around the cord grips as shown. So when the light switch is turned on, the line connector is made live which will turn the light on. And when the switch is turned off, there's no power at the line connector and the light will go off. Occasionally you may see a ceiling rose wired up like this with apparently nothing connected to the permanently live loop connector in the middle. The simple reason for this is that the lighting circuit and the switch connections are likely to be in another junction box, perhaps in the ceiling void. The ceiling rose shown here is just used to connect the switch live and neutral wires to the light fitting itself. The loop connector is essentially redundant. One of the other things to watch out for is the old style wire colours. There's nothing different about wiring up a ceiling rose with these colours. Just remember red is live, black is neutral and the switch live is likely to have a red sleeve on it to show it's a switch live. If you have a new light pendant added to an old style ceiling rose, you may see a combination of these colours. Now it's good before you put the lid back on to check all the connections. So using your screwdriver, just make sure that all the screws are tight. Here on the neutral part. 
and then the permanent live. And then on the switch live. And then give them a little tug using a pair of thin nose pliers. Just give them a little tug to make sure that they are in correctly. So all the neutrals are in there okay. Then check the permanent lives. Give me a little tug, like so. And on that one. There we are. And then on the switch lives. So everything appears to be okay. So we're ready to put the lid back on. So just thread it out through the cord. And then screw it on so it's nice and tight. So now we're ready to turn the power on. I hope you found this video helpful. In the next video about ceiling roses, you will learn how to replace a pendant light that required a ceiling rose with one that doesn't, like this one. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you want to leave any comments, please do so on YouTube. Bye now.